Good morning, everybody. Painblade back here again from Server One, representing ISC and Tribes Lab. Uh, guys, today we're going to be covering a, a some something that a lot of people are asking about, and uh, it's about what URs should you be four starring first. Um, now, the concept behind a UR and awakening them is is as follows: Don't ever five star uh, a UR until your main URs that you're going to plan to use are four stars. Now, I've explained this in a couple of videos before, the frequently asked questions ones, which I explained which URs to upgrade quickly, but I'm going to go into more in-depth conversation about why you want to upgrade these, these URs first and what they offer to your team. And also at the same time, you want to make sure that you remember that traits are more important than the fifth skill, which is the damage increase rate up. Now, the reason why traits are so important, number one, they offer you a lot of buffs slash debuffs to the opponent. And at the same time, they're associated and linked to your limit break too, right? So if you don't have your UR at four stars, you're not going to have the ability to use your limit break too, which is sometimes crucial to a character and, and improves them from being, you know, like an S tier to an SS tier, uh, i.e. Gara, um, you know, Sasuke Kirin, uh, Sasuke Hebi. So those are some of the, the characters that are, are key characters to um, having your URs up to four and breaking their limits. So um, let's go into a little more in-depth conversation in terms of why you want to do these certain URs. And I'm going to go in order specifically of which ones you should do first. Uh, and then there are specifically five main URs that you want to get to five first. Oh, sorry, to four first. And then from there, you can either keep going on other URs that you plan to use or you can stop there and get them to five going forward. Um, but let's jump into it and let's see which ones I'm referring to. Okay, so the top UR that everyone should be getting to four first is Gara. Now I'm going to go through his trait and I'm going to go through his limit break and explain to you why he's so important. There are now there are characters that are uh, that are they are, they are UR that have traits that are selfish. So when I when I say selfish, I mean they are characters that only benefit themselves, right? So uh, um, Naruto Kage is one of them, right? So I'm, we'll, we'll look at his, but Gaara, on the other hand, benefits your team. And those are the kind of characters, especially for tanks and support teams, or support characters, those, those are the kind of traits you want. You want traits that actually support your entire team or active allies versus just themselves, right? So tanks are a big part of this game. So D units should be there to protect especially real tanks like Gara should be there to protect their entire squad. So if we look at his skills, now you, if it's if you notice the fourth skill is called as, as Kazakage, when it's red, that means you've you've done limit break two. So there's an added effect to the original trait, right? So if we click on the actual trait here and look at the skill, so this is what Gara does, and this is why he should be your number one priority to get to four stars. Boost all active allies damage reduction rate and guard rate if the user's active at the start of the turn. And his limit break two boosts all active allies defense if the user is active at the start of the turn. And that lasts for the rest of the battle. Now how that works, okay? As I mentioned to you uh, in my last video, or maybe two videos ago, all active allies means the three shinobi that are in rotation. It doesn't have to be the same color. It doesn't have to be the same cell. As long as they're in the same rotation, he will offer these buffs to them. Now, what's so good about these buffs? Damage reduction rate, as you guys know, is a flat damage reduction to all damage done to you by 26.3%. So all three of those characters are going to have that buff, right? He also increases guard rate by 23.65% for all of those allies. Guard rate is huge. And as you guys know, that guard rate, when you when someone hits you, you'll see a blue shield pop up around them. It's very it's very fast, but you'll see it. And it reduces your, your, uh, your damage based on how much guard damage rate those characters have. Right? So it can be quite a bit. It can be up to like 65% if they have a buff from Gara, Or it can be as low as 20%. But nonetheless, it's still a lot of damage reduction. And then lastly, he boosts all allies' defense, right? All active allies' defense by 17.9%. So those three active allies in the same rotation as him are getting three of the best buffs defensively they can possibly get. So Gara is, is, is easily the best you are uh, because of this uh, LB2. Not only that, but it complements his, his actual sand burial move, which also increases guard rate up. So that'll add on to the guard rate he's already giving you from his trait when you do this. 
And then he also boosts guard damage rate reduction by 32%. So now he's increasing your guard rate as well as your guard rate reduction or guard damage reduction. So you're, you're even taking less damage. So that is so crucial, guys, um, to, to being the, an amazing tank. So this is what makes Gara the best you are in the game and why you should make him your first priority for four star. All right. So next one I want to talk about is Sasuke Kirin. Now, Sasuke Kirin is the ultimate tank killer. He and Jiraiya are probably the best two tank killers in the game. And by tank killers, I mean D units. Uh, Kirin does it a bit better because he has an AoE. Jiraiya does it almost as good. He has a single target, but he doesn't hit as hard. Okay. Now, what makes Kirin the second best you are for a trait is his absolute authority trait. Now, originally, he gave all active allies, again, the same rotation, or the same three people in the same rotation, an attack boost. But now, he also offers a damage increase rate up by 17.92%, which makes him, hands down, the most, um, probably the best support for attackers in the game, easily. So not only are those three units now getting attack boost, they're also getting a damage increase rate boost every single time his turn comes up okay so you're not only going to be hitting harder with crits you're not only going to be hitting harder with regular attacks you're going to be hitting harder with all your jitsus so that's what makes Kirin so valuable but on top of that he already with his special reduces the opponent's damage reduction rate for the rest of the battle when he hits them so when he hits the active opponent's enemies or ally, sorry, so whenever he hits the active opponents who are in the same rotation as him, he reduces their damage reduction rate by 22.92%. So he already reduces damage reduction rate by 22%, and then he gives you a buff to hit even harder. So he is the, easily the ultimate debuffer slash buffer for all attack units. So this is what makes him the most deadly support unit in the game and why he should be number two on your list. All right? So Sasuke, Black Costume, a.k.a. Kirin, second next to Gara, the third one and this is this is a lot of people tend to forget is this man here didara now art is an explosion has currently only a limit break one not two yet so he doesn't have a secondary skill yet associated to it but the art is an explosion is fantastic because it offers all allies for the rest of the battle which means he doesn't have to be available in the rotation for this to pop it'll just be there for the rest of the battle he increases all allies critical damage rate by 20.84%, which is insane. So what you wanna essentially do is if you go back and you look at your stats and you see that critical damage increase rate on top by 19.17%, for example, for him, he increases that by another 28%. So all of your crits are now doing 28% more damage. And not only that, but it complements him so well with a second skill because he lowers the opponent's critical suppression rate, which means you they, they, they can't, you hit them by 12% more by with your crits. And at the same time, with his special, he raises crit, um, the actual crit rate you do of all allies for two turns by 33.65%. So this man pretty much guarantees you crit hits and insane crit damage by having him on your team. He is the ultimate crit buff supporter. Having he and Kirin, Sasuke Kirin together in the same team is the ultimate duo for damage. So you definitely want to make him third on your list. All right. Fourth is going to be Sasuke Hebi. Now he and Kakashi are very close and I choose him over Hebi or Kakashi only for one reason. Eyes that, that, um, Eyes that Have Sworn Vengeance wasn't as good as Kakashi's copycat ninja trait, but the LB2 made it better. So this is why he has the edge. So what Sasuke does is whenever an ally dies, he increases his own chakra by quite a bit and his own attack power by quite a bit. But the bonus here that makes him better is that he boosts his own damage increase rate by 5.73% for the rest of the battle every time he's active. Now what that means, guys, is when it says the rest of the battle and when he's active, that means for the rest of the battle, every time it's his turn, he will stack 5.73%, which means every day, every time it's his turn, he goes 5.73% on turn one, 
Second turn, he goes 5.73% on top of 5.73%. So now he's around 11%, right? And then another 5.73% after his third turn. Now he's at 17%, etc. So he continues to increase it every single time it's his turn. Now, if you know anything about damage increase rate, it's a flat damage increase multiplier of your attack. So he continues to just do way more damage. And it's because it's not a crit-based chance, this is what gives him the edge above, above Kakashi. Kakashi does his, and I'll show you his later, right after this one. He does crit damage rate up, um, which is fantastic, but the problem is you have to crit in order for that to work. This is a flat 100% increase to your damage. So this is what makes Heavy number four on the list, okay? Now, number five, as we're talking about the man, let's get to him. Kakashi, there he is. Now, Kakashi's copycat ninja is fantastic, and here's the reason why. First off, every time he does a jutsu, he increases his own critical uh, rate by 40.95%, and he already has an insane critical rate on his stats. So he's already going to be doing about, let's say, 80% critical rate uh, hits, right? 80% chance. And it lasts for the whole battle, so it's, it's great. The moment he does his second one, it boosts him at 100%. He's good to go. The problem is you have to wait for that second jutsu to, to, to hit, and it has to be his own jutsu. But the, the thing that makes this really special, especially for marathon fights, which makes him really deadly, is he now also boosts his own critical damage increase rate by 6.46% at the start of his turn for the rest of the battle. So just like Hebe's, this stacks. So the moment he hits 100%, this man is now the, the biggest powerhouse in the game. He will continuously do crits, and every single time it's his turn, those crits will get stronger and stronger and stronger. They add on to each other. So making Kakashi the best marathon fighter. Now, if he stays alive and nobody kills him, he's going to be your hardest hitter. There's no question about it. Um, the, only, the only one that might stand a chance against him is maybe Itachi. Maybe. That's only because Itachi um, uh, raises his damage increase rate every time somebody dies on the opponent's side. Um, he might hit just a little harder, especially if they're T-units. But Kakashi, hands down, is probably the hardest hitter. So that's what makes him the deadliest, right? Now, if you know... Kakashi, if you're faster than your opponent, he already does extra damage. Uh, and also, if his own HP is above 50%, he does even more damage there. So, definitely making him the hardest hitter in the game, for sure. So, those are the top five guys. So, let's go through it again. It's Gara is number one. Sasuke Kirin is number two, as they are your biggest two supports for your units. Three is going to be um, Dadara for your crit damage units. So, those that makes the three best combination of units together for support. And then you have uh, Sasuke Hebi for his two stuns and his damage increase rate. And then lastly, you have Kakashi. So those are the five main URs. You want to get to four stars before you consider getting one else to five. You know, some other units you may want to consider, of course, are Itachi. But you, if you started the game, you would probably already have him. Naruto Kage, now he is a little selfish, like I said. But he does stack a ton of damage uh, reduction rate, which makes him insanely insanely tanky but he only just does it for himself right so um he also is a nuke so he also increases his own attack so he's a stronger hitter hitter than gara but he's not as uh, he's not as as um supportive of the rest of the team but he can take a ton of damage as well too so his is great i mean but i wouldn't i wouldn't put prioritize him anywhere near the five that i mentioned um who else can we look at here i mean honestly they're really like b is he boosts his own attack and now he does guard suppression rate Kind of mediocre. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Sasuke, Papa Sasuke is probably the worst one. Uh, he has the same skill as trait as Sasuke Heavy, but now with his LB2, he just boosts his own chakra even more, which to me is useless for him. Uh, so I definitely don't 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 concentrate on that one. Uh, Chio, I think it's the same idea. She she either gives damage reduction rate if she's uh, f uh, f last in the turn, or if she's first, she heals by thirty percent of her attack. Again, not useful enough. Um, and I think actually that's it for the URs. I don't think there's anyone else. I think I've covered pretty much all of them. So yeah, that's it, guys. Um, I hope this video helped you out. So remember, it's Gara, Sasuke Kirin, Dadara, uh, Sasuke Hebi, and lastly, uh, Kakashi. Those are your main five you want to get to four. I honestly would suggest even getting to five before you get anyone else to four, unless a new unit comes out and breaks the game. Uh, but until then, guys, very exciting news. We have a new banner coming in two days. I'll be covering the update tomorrow and then the summon video on, uh, on Wednesday. And we're going to do it a little different again. 
Now I'm just going to be getting enough Shino coins like for the for the sale. And then we're going to see how many it takes to actually summon a unit to help you guys figure out is it worth spending X amount of Shino coins to get these units. Um, so no more big pulls, but we'll do enough to see how much it takes to get one. All right, guys, it's Payne. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon.